Hey, so this is Neil from MasterPaintingOut.com, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to sculpt a really good butt. But in order to know how to do that, you have to understand like the anatomy of the butt, all that kind of stuff, which is important. But there's other things you need to understand before we even get started. We're going to be sculpting from scratch. We're going to start with some primitive shapes. But there's some things I want to show you first with this model that's really important to understand about the hip area, how the legs attach, and how the butt and stuff and relate to the hips, right? There's this really important information. This is probably most important than anything else I'm going to show you in the video, so don't skip this part. And you might be wondering, why do I want to watch this if I don't want to sculpt, you just want to draw? Trust me, knowing how to sculpt the body is going to make you a much better drawer. But literally, just the information you're going to learn in this video will make you better at drawing because you'll have new information in your, in your head. And when you start drawing from reference, you'll understand things in a different perspective that you never understood before. Definitely take the time to learn how to sculpt, even if you just want to be a good painter or drawer. And for that, I highly recommend my new 3D anatomy course. So you can check that out on my website, masterpaintnow.com. I'll link to it in this video uh, as a pinned comment. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Then I'm going to show you these important tips that are super, super important before we get started actually sculpting. All right, so let's go ahead and from the back side, the first thing I want to show you is that if we take this, oh, by the way, I'm sculpting in ZBrush, but anything that I'm talking about here, you can easily do in Blender if you already know how to use Blender. So whenever I'm sculpting, you can, if I'm sculpting in Blender, you can easily translate whatever I'm teaching into ZBrush. You just have to know how to use the software you're using or Mudbox or any software really. So the first thing you do, whatever you need to do to go like this, if you want to analyze a model, just selecting it. You can do this in Blender as well. And I'm going to reverse that. So in ZBrush, you just select it, and then I'm going to just uh, draw a thing around here to reverse it. What I want to show here is here's the bottom of the buttocks, right? So we're at the bottom of the buttocks here. What's important to understand is the bottom of the buttocks is lower than the crotch, right? So from the front view, the crotch is here, but from the back view, the buttocks are a little bit lower, right? And sometimes it's even a little bit lower, a little bit lower than this. And actually, I could probably go up a little bit. Yeah, it's about right. So just keep that in mind. This is a really important tip that the buttocks, I probably should lift this up just a little bit because it's actually a little bit wrong. It should be more like that. All right, about like this. There we go. Because it kind of curves, it kind of curves up as you come here. That's another thing I'll talk about in a second. So that's a really important tip is the butt is lower in the back than in the front. That is from the front, the crotch is here. But in the back, the butt is down here, right? So it has this, there's a ramp here where it goes up like this. So crotch is higher, butt is lower. Okay. Another thing I wanted to show, and I might be able to show it right here without having to decimate the model or anything. Well, it makes it kind of harder to see. Let me go ahead and oh, what we can do is go to sub tool. We'll just kind of split hidden, and then I'll hide the legs. And then I'll just go ahead and remesh this really quick. And like that. Okay, so you can see this next part is how the legs look. The shape of the legs is important because the butt is going to be attaching this. The legs go like this. See how you have this curve right here? Because this is accounting for this muscle that goes from here like this. And it starts and it goes all the way down. Right? The rectus femoris. Right? So that part is important to understand. And so it has this kind of dip right here. If you can see it, it curves in because this goes up and like that. So from the front view, it's kind of hard to tell that, but there's a dip right here. So it goes up and down. You can see it from this view, that dip right here. See how it curves in like this? That's important to understand. And then right here, I'm going to keep the legs off for a second so you can understand this. Um, see how the crotch, it's going up like this. It kind of curves down like this. And it, so this is lower. And then when you come back here, it's actually higher. Now the buttocks is lower. But if the butt wasn't there, it kind of comes up like that. I'll try to show that with a different view. And let's go ahead and bring this back, though. I'm going to undo all that. And just tap like this. Put the select tool and tap on the screen to bring it all back. You should know how to do that, though, whatever software you're using, including ZBrush. So another thing I want to show is let's go ahead and get rid of... Um, I'm going to change this to a different tool. I want the drawing tool now. Select a drawing tool. And I'm going to kind of just go like this and get rid of the butt. So what we're going to do is we're going to go like this. Because I want to be able to show you from a side view. Oops, I meant to go like this. So from the side view, you can 
kind of see what I'm talking about. You see like this right here, it ramps like that, and then look at it. It goes up like this. It has a ramp that goes up like this to the back. So the butt then comes and goes over that, but if you had no butt, you would have this kind of ramp right here. That's important to understand, and so that's why I'm mentioning it. There's a couple other things I want to mention before um, we continue with sculpting the butt. The butt muscles come down like this. This is all fat right here. The butt muscle comes down like this, and it attaches over here almost to the side of the leg right here. And then you have the... Another thing that's really important to understand is how the crotch works here. So you have the crotch, which is kind of like this, this diamond shape right here. Like that. See that? Kind of like... By diamond shape, I mean kind of like diamonds on cards. See that shape right there? That's important. And then it goes all the way up to here. So this is all the that shape. And when you come to the butt, notice from this angle, it's kind of hard to tell. When you look at a butt, you kind of just draw the shape like this, right? But if you draw someone laying down, if you don't have reference and you don't understand the shape of the butt, you might do this incorrectly. And this is important when sculpting the butt that this is correct. Um, so the butt comes all the way here. See that? I'm going to make my brush smaller. It comes all the way to here. It attaches inside this crotch area. So all this right here, this is all still the butt right here, right? So it comes out like that. And we'll be sculpting that when we sculpt it, right? So that's important to understand. And so you have the leg here, the thigh, boom, like this. And the thigh is coming all the way around. It's attaching here. You notice it has this curvature around. And then it kind of cuts in here. And this is important where it attaches. And then it kind of curves around like that. So you want to make sure you have this almost hourglass shape. See it right there? Boom, that hourglass shape right in here. Make sure you have that from this angle. And that the butt is starting from here. So it kind of goes in like that. See, it's coming around and it's going inside. And you can only see that when you tilt it up. From here, you can't tell that, but it does curve all the way in and attaches to this part of the crotch. So this would be insertion point, And then right here would be like, you know, butthole point. So it's important to have that shape right there. Right, so anyway, I wanted to point that out. And I'm going to look at one other model here before we continue. I have to blur out part of it, though, so let me go ahead and pause the video. All right, so this is a very uh, detailed 3D body scan. By the way, I had to buy these body scans just to show you this part of the tutorial. And so it cost me like 60 bucks. So if you want to help recuperate some of that, consider buying one of my courses, especially my 3D anatomy course, really, really good course. If you, whether, whether you want to draw paint, or you want to be like a sculptor for like video games and stuff. Now, what I wanted to show here is because this is a high, higher um, resolution model here. So from the backside, it's really important you have these dimples here and you have this kind of triangle. See that? That triangle is important and that the love handles go above the buttocks. That's important. And then from the front view, you can see you have the hip bones here that stick out, part of the iliac crest. And then the love handles are going to be on top of that. But see how they kind of they kind of slant forward because she's kind of tilting her body forward a little bit. See that? That kind of, this is the hip bone right here. And the love handle attaches on top of this, right? The, that is basically the oblique muscles. So that comes up right here. So from the back side, you can see it's here. Boom, like that. From the side view, it goes like this. It has this kind of, see the leg kind of comes all the way up like that. It has this kind of shape right here, right? Because that's part of the love handle coming up there. And you can see from here, all that right there. Uh, anyway, so all above this would be the love handle, and then this is all part of the leg muscles. Uh, you can actually see her her hip bone right here, boom, with that hip, and all this is the leg. That's important to understand. And I want to show you, you can, you can see this right here. See how the butt is back there? And then let's go ahead and turn it around. So you have the buttocks here, and here's a little bit easier because you can see the legs are open a little bit. Um, the, butts, the butt is pressing together, the butt fat here is pressing together. But you can see when you look underneath, it's wrapping around like this. You can still see that that shape I was talking about. See right here? Boom, boom. And it come, now it comes out like this because the leg's not blocking it, so it's not making an hourglass shape. So when the legs are open, you can see this shape right here. Right? So it's kind of like, I don't know what that shape is. It's almost like a house. See? The bottom of the house, the walls, and then the roof, the peak of the roof here. Can you see that shape? Kind of like a house. So you can see, though, that from this angle, it's kind of hard to tell, right? But the butt is wrapping and going underneath. So watch how this changes. Because see, this this touches the surface. See how that wraps around this way? You can see that's wrapping around. Wrapping around. So watch this. All flat. Now watch that. See that cursor? How it wraps around. Let's go closer. You can see. 
See, this is the cursor, right? Watch how it wraps around. See how it's going away from us? Look at that. Boom. See how that wraps all the way inside there? So it's like wrapping into a cave. So think about that. So the butt is all right here. This is all the butt right here. That's all the fat, right? That's not all muscle. The muscle kind of comes more like this, right? But this is all this fat here is important. Fat and tissue comes around like that. So it's important to understand how that works. Okay, so that's just the introduction. And that's all really important information that we need to know before we get started here. I wanted to see if I can show with this model here. It's kind of cut away right here where the leg is. Reverse that. And let's see if we can kind of see. Yeah, we kind of can. Um, you know, okay, I'm, I think I'm going to do is I'm going to split this. I'm going to see if I can't dynamesh after I split it. So sub tool, let's split hidden. We can hide that, go back here, and let's see if it'll dynamesh correctly. And dynamesh. Right, so I wanted, I wanted to show this shape right here. So see how, if you think about the leg, it attaches like this to the, to the hip, right? So that's all the leg, because the leg comes all the way up here. Well, not quite up there. I kind of went into the, um, we're going a little bit into the love handle, but I, just, I really wanted to, this is the shape you want to think about, right? How the leg attaches. Think about it this way when you're sculpting and drawing. It really helps a lot. And you can see right here, you see how the crotch comes up? And it, you can tell it's in a slant upward. See that slant right there? How it's slanting up into it. Let me get rid of more of this so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. Let's get rid of some of this butt right here. Boom. Um, oops. Reverse it. You see how it's slanting up? The crotch goes like this and it slants up like that. So if there's no butt cheeks, it slants up. And that's really important to understand. Okay, so I think that's all the stuff we need to know. And we can now get started and start sculpting. We're going to sculpt from just a regular, like, uh, you know, A pose kind of thing. It's really good to learn. We might have the legs a little bit open so we can kind of uh, develop the butt and everything the way we need to. And then maybe if you guys are really interested, I can do another one where we um, sculpt a butt from some particular pose, like maybe this pose or another interesting pose where it kind of shapes the dynamic of the buttocks a little bit differently. But when you understand the butt, especially if you take my anatomy course and how the butt attaches and how the fat works and all that, you can kind of figure out logically the shape that it will have in different poses. But okay, so that's that. And now that, that next part, I'm going to um, kind of fast forward. I, I'm going to record it and I'm going to kind of go through the important parts rather than all being real time. So it saves some time here. All right, so continue on here. I'm going to fly through some of this. And if you guys are interested, I'm going to show how we do this model. And I'll show you the end result real quick. And so this here is the end result. And if you guys want, um, I've recorded everything how I got the entire figure done. So if you guys want to see um, a video where I go through all commentary and how I do the whole entire figure, let me know. But for now, I'll be fast forwarding through a lot of stuff, just getting to the butt and focusing on the butt in this video. Because this is all about how to sculpt a nice booty. Right, so let's go ahead and continue on. So the first thing I like to do is I like to measure out you know how how the figure is going to be if i'm going to try to copy this model or i want it to be similar to this model then i need to use her head but if you want to just do a model in general start with the head you can just start with the general head that you've already made or something or start with the head that you know is on zbrush or maybe you can find one that you've already downloaded for blender and then based on that what we do here is you take a sphere and put this here i'm not going to be talking about how to use the software so this is just about how to sculpt the butt if you want to learn how to use, um, you know, software specifically, uh, then, you know, definitely learn how to do that. I do have my 3D anatomy course where I actually show how to do everything in Blender. And I talk about how to do everything in Blender and how to use Blender throughout the entire course. And so that's a, a good one to start with. So what you want to do is you want to match up the sphere to where it basically is from the bottom of the nose to the top of the head. You don't want it, you don't want it to be bigger than that. And you'll know that when it's right, because if you put two of them on top of each other, I turn off. I turned off the perspective view just to make sure I have this measurement right. Then when you put the two spheres on top of each other, you should have it to where it goes from the top of the head to the collarbone. This is a different measuring system than measuring by heads. 
this is a measuring system that a lot of sculptists uh, use because when you're sculpting, you don't have to worry about perspective. Uh, you're actually, you could actually take your uh, model that you're, you're sculpting on and just have those measurements be exact, right? And so typically it's um, two heads to the, or no, not two heads, two spheres, sorry, to the collarbone, and then another two spheres brings you right about at the bottom of the rib cage, which is a little bit above the belly button. Because remember, the belly button lies between the love handles, and the love handles lie between the bottom of the rib cage and the top of the uh, pelvis. So there's that, there's that empty space between the rib cage and the and the hip bone, and that is where the belly button is. So anyway, let's get on to the butt. I just want to show how we set this up for basic shapes. And then the next two, depending on the on the model, uh, this is why I said if you want to just do like a, a a standard kind of you know comic character model, then you would have this right here would be the bottom of the crotch, and so you, basically the rib cage to the bottom of the crotch is pretty much evenly divided. But with this model here, uh, this is a 3D body scan, by the way, and so you know everyone's a little different. So these you know you can change these proportions proportions ever so slightly. So sometimes the crotch might be a little bit lower. In this case, the, the model is that way. And the other model I'm going to show you was the more expensive one. If you want to help me recuperate the cost of that, just buy one of my courses as a thank you. And so here we see it's a little bit uh, lower than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the sphere up to match because I want to match this, uh, this model here. So we're going to pull it up. So it's about one and a half. And then when you're using this measurement system, this the six balls measures the upper body from the top of the head to the crotch and then from the other side you go next to it starting from right here this ball you go right next to that and that measures the legs and the legs turn out to be um, six as well so three spheres for the leg to about the knee and then three spheres down to the bottom of the foot and then two spheres upper arm and two spheres for the lower arm that's the basic measurement of the body and then we'll go two spheres wide for the widest part where the breasts are at, and then two spheres for the widest part where the hips are at. For a male, that's a little different. It's about two spheres, two spheres for the widest part where his chest is at, but not quite two spheres for his hips, because his hips are more narrow. But almost two spheres if he has a buff leg for the widest part of his leg. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and... Oops. Okay. Actually, the hell? So my dog laid on my keyboard. That was the problem. And as you can see, right there, I just want to show where it's where it goes to the knee. Right there, right about it divides the knee right about in half. And then the next three spheres will be to the bottom of the foot. Right. So that's pretty um, accurate. I mean, it it matches most people. Like I said, sometimes like with this model, the where the crotch is is a little bit shy. But for the most part, it's six spheres and six spheres. That, that means it's not 12 spheres high. It's actually like 11 spheres high. Because remember, we were putting this one up next to this one. And it's a really good measuring system, and the arms are like four, four spheres. I'm going to go ahead and show the, the, the wideness here. And then I'm just going to put those in the same layer, copy them down, and show the wideness here. See? So the wideness where you see the breast hanging outside the width of the rib cage is about the same as the widest part of the hips. Although the widest part is actually a little bit lower right about here, right at the crotch line. And that gets a little bit wider than two spheres. But for the most part, this is a good starting. So that's where I like to start from. So once I got that out of the way, then I can start using basic shapes. So I'm going to use a primitive box here and pull this into place. This doesn't represent the lower portion, like where the hips would be. Keep in mind that the actual hips won't go this high because they're going to be, there's space between the bottom of the rib cage and the bottom and the top of the hips. But I'm going to go ahead and make the box up there because we're going to kind of do the love handles as part, part of this upper box will be part of the love handles. And you'll see what I mean. It's a good way to work. Um, so using a, a box for the lower part and then a sphere for the upper part is a good way to work here. What I'm showing here is the, the width, right? how wide it is. So the sphere, it's a little bit wider than a sphere from the side view. And then where the butt sticks out. And then the leg also, the, the thigh, is about a sphere wide. But the butt sticks out farther than that. So, But we're going to add the butt on last. Because the most important part to get your butt right 
is making sure your hips are correct. Without that, then it doesn't matter if you have your butt on there. But well, I'm going to show how to fit the butt properly because the butt fits on a proper torso here, proper hips and legs. And how the legs attach is extremely important. Once I have the box in there, I'm going to go ahead and put a sphere and just going to reshape the sphere. You should know how to do this in whatever software you're using. It's really easy to do. Blender has a way to do this. Every every 3D software allows you to easily, you know, change the the sizing by you know squishing it around. So I'm just using the um, the scale, you know, just to scale it in different directions on different axes. What I want to do is I want the I want the rib cage to come a little bit over the top of the sphere here because it's going to come and become the neck. Remember, the neck comes continues up here before we get to the head. About halfway up the sphere will be the neck, and then the rest is the head, because the head is about a sphere and a half. And then what I'm doing is I'm comparing it to the actual model, because I want to make sure that it, I stay pretty accurate to that. At first, I was just going to use the spheres as a guide. I did that in the last uh, video I made on sculpting breast. And also, I, I'll, I'll be showing, if I, if I do do the entire commentary for this whole entire human figure, how to do this entire model from beginning to end, because I do have everything recorded for that. Then um, I show the breast again, and, and these are a little bit more different and realistic breasts. So it's good to just learn a couple. Of, I do a couple different different things techniques. What I'm doing here is I'm just kind of smoothing out the edges of the of the box, so it's kind of like a smooth box. And I think you can actually. There's other ways to get a smooth box. Like there's like settings you can do. Anyway, I just do it this way. I like I like the feeling of sculpting. I like to know that I don't know, I just like the feeling of sculpting. I want to feel like I'm sculpting everything. I don't want to feel like I'm just using built in parameters or something. Because you can start with like, you know. Anyway, this is my preference. So here I'm showing is that a shape that is on the underside of the crotch. So the crotch has this mound that comes out here. And then you have this kind of upside down triangle shape right here. And kind of imagine this shape that's in there. And sometimes it's kind of like a house where it'd be like this and kind of straight lines and then the, the peak of the house, right? So you want to imagine and, and get that shape and that shape is really important. And then the buttocks come in and they actually attach inside here. We'll be showing that later. So this part here is all like negative space. The legs will attach here and come out like this. Like that's the legs. And then this will not be negative space. This will be actually part of the butt cheeks that come in here like this and they come off. Now I'm going to go ahead and take clay away. And so to do that in ZBrush, you just hold down the Alt key and, and use the clay strips. In Blender, you hold down the uh, Control key. But I'll just be talking about what I'm doing. So I'm just stripping clay away. So I'm removing clay. I'm just going to talk about it as if I'm sculpting with clay because this is easier. And then I'm using the um, damp standard brush right there. You can use the crease brush or, you know, some other brush and blender that you think that you feel like is the equivalent. And I'm just kind of showing like the shape of the legs and how the legs attach on. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a very primitive kind of, you know, hips shape. And what's important here is I'm taking clay away so I have an angle. That is the crotch is actually lower when you think about from the head than this backside. So there's this angle right here. Right? It doesn't go at a straight line like this. This is, a, this is extremely important if you want to sculpt you know, um, a figure that, that feels correct from all the different angles. So that if, you, if someone were to look at the model and it's in a video game or something, and the way the butt's attached and all that, like if you want it to look right, then you need to make sure you have this in here, right? So it kind of goes back like this. Now you don't ever really see this too much because the butt cheeks come out like this and the butt cheeks are lower than the crotch, like I showed. But anyway, it's important um, to get this slight ramp here. See that? I, I'm, I'm exaggerating it. I won't make it that drastic in the final. I just really wanted to demonstrate that and show that it's there. So for the most part, you know, everything's looking pretty good. It's matching up pretty well. And... I was debating whether or not I want to match it up perfectly um, because some people might feel like, well, it's kind of like you're cheating. But I mean, not really, because when you're sculpting from a model, right, 
In this case, I'm sculpting from a 3D scan, so it's really the actual person. In real life, if I was sculpting with clay, for example, I would have calipers. And if you've never seen like sculptor, sculptors, they have these like things that open and close, and you can take you know exact measurements with those. And so you you would put this on the model, and you would measure all these different areas. You would measure from here to here, and you would measure from here to here, here to here. And then the, the, what the calipers allow you to do is allows you to um, change to if you're making the model like you know one fifth of the human body size, or whatever. You can easily transfer those measurements over to your clay model exactly and so that way you're um it's matching the actual you know size of the model that you're doing and you can you can measure from here to here from here to here and so it's very similar so basically um and, and all sculptors did this all the great sculptors did this so i mean if measuring's cheating then then all the sculptors cheat you know uh or have cheated now if you but if you don't like that if you just want to um you know go by looking right you don't you don't want to have to you don't want to measure right you think measuring is cheating it's still trust me even if you even when you measure to get a, a sculpting that looks good at the end is not easy so i mean try it and see you'll see even try this method here where, where you're just trying to line it up with the model and you're going to see that it's, it's not easy to do and you know i'm only checking here and there to make sure everything's right but anyway um if you don't like that you can always do like i did my other sculptor my other sculpting the last video where i show how to sculpt breast and that one i just use the spheres as um, reference and that's it i don't use any model for reference so i just uh pretty much go by imagination you can always look at a reference and then you just not do any measuring just uh or do maybe some very basic measuring just to get the likeness because you won't get a likeness if you don't do any measuring but in other words don't match it up to the model like I'm doing here, you just use the spheres to measure it out, and then you anyway just watch the uh, breast video, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's literally just using the spheres as reference, and that's it. So you can see there, it's starting to match up. I don't mind if there's overlap. I'm not trying to get it perfect. I just want it close enough, and I'm just kind of using that as a guide to double check, make sure everything's matching up. And and this is something that you know you do when you're sculpting with clay. Or if you're trying to get a likeness, what you, you know, if you don't if you don't want to do it like this digitally, you can always take measurements also digitally. So you, and you're constantly measuring. So a, after you have sculpted everything and you, and you feel like okay, I think I got everything right, you'll re-measure again to make sure you haven't gone, you haven't deviated too much from the measurements. And so like when you're sculpting with clay um, and you have your model there, you'll do the measurements and then you'll sculpt it out, you know, and then you'll like go back and retake the measurements again just to make sure you haven't deviated too much from that and then here about halfway up on this piece here if you have this shape how how i have it where it comes up a little bit higher than the collarbone then about the halfway point here is where the bottom of the sternum is and then the rib cage will come out like this i'm just kind of doing just markings that aren't going to be part of the final sculpt but they're there to kind of guide where everything is going to be and you'll do this when you're working with clay too you'll like make little markings and i'm just kind of i was kind of trying to make like have it stick out a little bit where the sternum is and then that's about where the collarbones are going to be and just kind of i'm just kind of winging it and then i'm going to measure it up to see if it's right now again i don't know why it did this see how when i'm moving it's looking strange i have no idea why it did this this has happened to me one time before in zbrush all i did is save my project close zbrush and reopen it and fix it so i don't know why it did that but it's not how the move brush is supposed to work so some sort of bug or something and so anyway I, I'm like, I can't figure out what's going on. I tried different things. And then ultimately, it came down to just saving, closing the ZBrush, reopening it. Now it's working just fine. And so I want to make sure that the rib cage is matching up with the model here. And also make sure that it's centered right. And then I'm just kind of moving it, pushing it in place, and making sure everything's kind of matching, which it was. I got it, I got it pretty close just by you know, eyeballing it. So then I was just double checking some things. And doing minor adjustments so that matches the model as close as possible because I really want to make sure that when we get to the butt part, everything's correct. Okay, so I'm going to kind of fly through this because we're going to get, you know, we don't we don't even know how to do the rib cage. I'll, I'll do that in, you know, in the um, if, I, if I end up making the video where because I have all this stuff recorded, so if I end up making a video of doing the whole entire model, then we'll get into that. 
And so here I'm just kind of showing, you know, those bumps that can protrude on a on a thinner model. Just showing that really quick. You saw them on that one model that I showed earlier. They're not going to be on this model, but I just wanted to show that kind of where they're at. And so in the back, it's kind of important when you're doing the butt that where the rib cage meets the oops, where the rib cage meets the um, well, not meets, but it goes into the back where it's going to go into the to the hip. Right here was this transition right here. You'll have this kind of triangle. These are the dimples. You'll have this kind of triangle like this. And the bottom of this triangle, that's where the top of the butt cheeks are. So they'll kind of come up right here. That's where you have the Y for the butt cheeks. And then it kind of, you know, how the line goes up like this and it kind of curves out like that and like that. And then the butt cheeks kind of look like a butterfly. They kind of go like this and like this. That's like the shape of them because you have this little indent right here. But anyway. We'll get into that as we go. I just wanted to kind of point that out. So I'm kind of put the dimples in there now, just kind of matching up to make sure that it's in the right in the right spot. Like I said, because every model is a little different. If I did like an ideal person, like I do from imagination, I could do that, but it wouldn't match up with this model. So that's why I just want to make sure it's kind of matching up here. And see, that's that that why I'm talking about. This is the butt crack, and this is where the top of the butt cheeks are. And this is this kind of um, flat plane in the back. Um, if you feel it, it's kind of bony in a flat plane because it's part of the the bone area of the pelvis. And then, and then you'll have the love handles, which are on top of the butt cheeks. That's where the love handles are in the back. And then they kind of come up from this and they kind of angle down to the front. But again, we'll go more into that if I do the full, full lesson on commentating on doing the whole the whole figure just kind of putting in where that will be and again I'm gonna kind of fly through a lot of this and we'll get to the hips again when we when we start doing things with the hips so here's where we're attaching the leg and what's important is I start with the sphere and I kind of bend it to where it's a little bit oval and then I'm see remember I talked about this shape here in the beginning of the video so I'm pulling this shape out so we have this kind of comes out like this that's the rectus femoris muscle that comes out like that and then it kind of indents here a little bit we'll make sure we get that in there as well using the move tool to kind of smash it in and then I'm kind of pulling out this because she has a lot of fat that where fat attaches to the leg a lot of it is on the inside right here this is where a lot of fat happens get a little bit of fat on the outside too but it built up here on the inside first. So as you start gaining weight, you're going to notice fat building up here first before it, before it develops anywhere else on the leg. And so even someone that is, you know, pretty fit and low body fat, they're going to still have some fat there. But not really on the outside of the leg. So that is, you'll be able to see the bone. On a, on a thinner lady, you'll be able to see the bone protruding on the outside here where the femur bone comes out, you'll see that kind of sticking out, but they'll still have some fat tissue on the inside of the leg here. Right, so now let's get into the buttocks. Once we have the legs on there, so all I did to, to carry the legs over, and this is just like, it look, looks kind of funny right now, but trust me, this becomes that model I showed you, so it's everything works out great. So what I have here then, once I have the leg attached, I do a little cool little trick in ZBrush. So I just want to talk about this really fast because it's kind of a cool trick to know. Cool ZBrush trick. And you can do this in Blender too. I can't I can't remember how top of my head. But if you know how to use Blender, you'll know how to do this. So once you have the leg done, actually in, in Blender, you can actually just mirror it over. You do the, um, yeah, that's right. So you just do a mirror modifier. And what I like about Blender is you can, you can actually have the mirror modifier active while you're working on one side. You can turn it off and on. And everything so that's really cool you can't I don't know if the, I don't know if there's anything like that in ZBrush if there is I haven't discovered how to use it yet so that's one thing I do like about Blender I think it's actually better for doing that but in this you have to use what's called uh, mirror weld so you go to um, let's see if I can find where it is yeah so you have to go to geometry and then right here under Modify Topology, you want to use this right here, Mirror and Weld. And that's going to mirror and weld it over. Now, if for some reason it doesn't work, then make sure to go down to, like, I can't remember what it is, 
deformation or something like that, and then choose a mirror and mirror it, mirror your whole model first, and then come back and mirror weld and it will do, it'll it'll work. So if for some reason it doesn't do anything, just just mirror it first and then come back and mirror and weld. And what that's going to do is bam, it makes it to where on this layer you have the you have the two legs now, and then I can you know merge this down with it, and now I have you know one form again I can work with. And then you in, then you uh, dynamesh it again. All right. So once we have that, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a sphere. I'm gonna pull a sphere in here. I'm gonna go ahead and go through this a little bit more slowly. And so once I have a sphere, I want to kind of deform it using the scaling. And as you can see, I just kind of smash it this way a little bit. And I'm turning it. And I'm kind of lining it up. So I, so basically, I'm trying to make it as close as I can to the end result that I want. So I don't have to do much moving. You know pushing around with the move brush to get the final shape. This is a technique I show in my 3D anatomy course when we do all the muscles. Now I'm using the move tool and I want to move it in all the different angles to make sure it's kind of lining up as close as I can to a, you know, to a butt. So what happens is from this angle, the butt comes up like this. The highest peak is usually right about here. So it kind of comes up like this. And then it slants down because it has to attach to the leg, right? So remember, the muscle kind of comes comes over here and attaches to the kind of like the almost the side of the leg. But when fat tissue, everything is on here, it goes up and it kind of ramps down. So you have this kind of shape like this, like an M, right? So just think about that shape right there. And see, what I want to do is I want to learn in zebra. If there's a way to do this in zebra, let me know because I don't know how to do it yet. If there is a way, something like the mirror modifier where I can have this one shape I'm working on, and then it automatically mirrors it over here without without it being finalized. So I can, you know, delete it if I want to, and then and then I can mirror weld this over. Kind of like a preview. Now what's important right here is I need to show, remember I talked about how that move right there is super important. Because remember I, I, I see how I kind of sculpted in this shape right here? This is really important. So you have this kind of, this kind of. Right now the thigh is kind of covering part of the house shape, where it goes like this, comes up like that. If, it, if she was thinner, you would be able to see this more. Then it comes up like this and like this, kind of creates this kind of house shape. But the thigh muscles here are kind of covering part of that, so you have this shape more. But what's important is the way I showed how those butt cheeks. Remember, I drew those lines in the beginning. That's because the butt wraps in here, it comes around, and it wraps in. Right, it comes inside. You won't be able to see this from the back angle, but it's important that you have this here because if you don't have this here, something's going to look wrong. If anyone is able to look at your model in 3D, they're like, see, from this angle, you can't, you can't see it, but it does go and it wraps under. It goes under, inside, and attaches in there. So if your character ever has to like bend over or something like that and they're in panties or anything like that or bikini or... Um, Anyway, if, if they can view your model from different angles in a game or whatever, they're going to know, like, they might not, if they don't know anatomy, they might not know why it feels wrong, but they're going to just go that something just doesn't feel right about this. It just doesn't seem correct. And that will be why. And this is one of the uh, places, this is all fat right here. Remember, the butt muscle goes like this and goes over. So all this is fat. But this is like the first place on the butt that you start building fat and pretty much everyone has fat here it might be a little bit less for someone that's really skinny or like you know malnutrition type of skinny you know anorexic or something like really unhealthily skinny but they're still going to have this some of this fat tissue here you can't get rid of it completely and so i'm kind of building that that fat tissue up there so that from the back angle and also I want to make sure the side angles right. You always want to make sure as you're sculpting to look around at all the different angles and make sure all the angles are, are matching up. And so from the side view, it kind of looks like this. It kind of goes like a, like, a, like a half of a teardrop. Boom, and kind of comes in like that. It doesn't, doesn't usually come up like this straight. It kind of goes, and it kind of goes like that. Now, sometimes you might get a little bit more, you know, straight here, but never is it going to come and come up, you know. So it's kind of imagine like this teardrop shape. I just kind of match it up to the model, make sure it's kind of matching up. It looks like it is. I just want to do some fine adjustments. I want to make sure that this is as accurate as possible. 
And again, uh, if you feel like this part is cheating and you don't, you don't want to do it this way, I get that. You can not do it that way. Just look at the model and measure it, you know, with your eyes. Or if you don't mind, take, take a little measurements. Now, if I was doing this on a live model, I wouldn't worry about the butt being so accurate. I would go mostly upon visualization. But I'm definitely going to take some measurements. I'm going to measure like from here to here, from here to here. I might measure from here to here. But I don't know if I'm going to measure like here to here. I'm not going to go in there and like take all these micro measurements to make sure it's super accurate, which is basically what I'm doing right now would be equivalent to that. But I just wanted to make sure that I match it up as close as possible so that it's it's accurate so that we know that the end result here is accurate so that this is what the shape would look like when it's accurate, right? So if you're wondering, well, what would it look like if you were to put a sphere on a model and it's not finalized yet, you haven't smoothed it out and everything, this is what it would look like. This is the shape that you want. And in fact, once you have this kind of buttock shape, I'm just going to put in, what I wanted to do is just, I wanted some reference. So as we're going to do the butt, I just wanted to have some basic reference. I'm not going to go into all this. This will be part of the, if you, if I do the video of the whole, how to sculpt this whole model, like how to sculpt a, you know, realistically sized model rather than like a superhero or like a, you know, an actual model, runway model. We just want something that's similar. I just wanted to show like just some reference points. So we have just something like we can look at here and here I'm just mirroring and welding it over. Again, if you if it doesn't work, just mirror it over. I think as long as you're working on the left side, it will always work. But if not, then you just mirror it over first by using down here under geometry. Not under geometry, but under here. Like down here, there's something called deform, I think. And then um, there's a mirror option there. You just click that. And if you're using Blender, then you could just be using the... Uh, whatever I forgot what it's called now. Oh yeah, it's just called mirror modifier. <laughs> so again, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna fly through this part real quick to get back to the get back to the butt because this is all about the butt. And I just want to show that it kind of matches on there. And there we go. Okay, so once I once I have this all kind of worked out, I have some you know basic thing to look at. I just wanted to fit it in its context because sometimes when you have a torso and it's not like, I don't know, just you don't get the full context of it and it kind of looks weird out of context. So I just want to make sure you have the full context here. All I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to merge the layers. This is really easy to do in ZBrush and it works really well. And then after you, then you dynamesh it afterwards. So I'm like, okay, that's a little bit too low res. So I need to dynamesh it with much higher res. One thing ZBrush is really good at, you can, you can Dynamesh at super high res and it's still going to fly. Even on a slower computer, you're still going to be much faster than Blender. So you can get quite detailed. And I figure that's probably enough detail, about about 504. I think I end up going all my Dynamesh all the way up to about 800, 900. Sometimes I go up to 1,000 before I will you know, then remesh it and then go into um, using using different layers using the dynamic subdivide or not dynamic subdivide but subdividing my my geometry and i'll show how to do that too um after we make a, a full detailed model if you want i can show you guys how to in zbrush how to remesh it to where you can animate it and then have you can have the you know use that high definition model and re like superimpose it onto the lower res and you'll have this like dynamic figure that you can pose and everything so what I'm trying to show here is I'm trying to show that that shape, and I I do I do a final correction too, that I'll show. And I just wanted to show because this model does have this kind of more fat tissue here, so I wanted to kind of show that um, that shape. So I'm adding some extra fat there on the thigh. Looking at all the different angles, it's looking pretty good. Making sure that I smooth this out, right? Because it's supposed to, um, where this butt, it rolls into the hip here. You want to make sure that the leg and the butt are all kind of just one piece. You don't want to have this delineation where the butt, you have the leg and then the butt coming off. It's rare, it's rare that you're going to see something like that. It's going to kind of 
you know, fold into it. That's why, not fold around into it, rather. That's why I'm adding the extra clay there. All right, so everything's starting to look pretty good. Just want to cross check now, making sure I didn't, I didn't deviate too much from the final result. Another thing I'll probably, I'll probably end up doing and showing is uh, a little dimple. You can put the little dimple on the side of the butt. And one thing you do here is after you add that crease back in there, um, you can really crease it with the damp sander brush. And then you can come back in and use the pinch brush to kind of pinch together. There's a, there's, there's a pinch brush in uh, Blender as well. See how it kind of pinches it together? I did it too much at the bottom though, so I did the bottom part. But it's just a way where you can really separate that line and then you can kind of pinch them together. You can also do the move tool to kind of move them together. Because you're if you have everything if you have um you hit X on Z on on your keyboard on ZBrush and that is how you turn off and on the mirror sculpting. All right, so a lot of this I'm gonna fly through because this will be part of the more full body. I just want to go to the parts about specifically about the butt here. Because I decided I wanted to turn I did all this work, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna turn this into a full figure. At first I was just gonna do the butt, but I'm like, I wanna turn this into a full figure. So just kind of lining it up with the model, make sure everything's lining up. There's some things I wanted to show, so I'm gonna kinda go like this and go faster. I wanna get to the part. There's some, some minor adjustments I make to the butt that I'm gonna show. So let's go ahead and fly through all that. This is all stuff I'll be talking about in the other video. I'm just going to fly through it so you can kind of just maybe get a preview of what we're going to be talking about and explaining. Putting the breast. I like to sometimes, you know, go to different mat caps so that I can get an idea of what everything's going to look like. So let's see here. Add the arms, elbow, adding a head that I've already done before. The knees, legs, just kind of match everything up. We weld the hands on. I'm just trying to go, I think there's a part, maybe I, maybe I didn't record it. Because I did change the butt a little bit. Okay, so unfortunately I didn't record it. But what I did is, this was a nice looking butt. But if you want it to look a little bit more um, youthful and not quite as uh, chunky, this is perfect for someone's a little bit chunky. But if you don't want it to look as chunky, what you can do is one, Reduce the fat here. So take some of this all off right here. Reduce this a little bit of the side out here. But right here where the butt kind of comes down like this, you take your move tool and just kind of move this out so there's more of a, a gap here. So you can see more of the crotch. And so just kind of move that out a little bit. And then, you know, it'll cause the butt here to come like this and come out like that, right about here like that, and then come here. And that will give you that kind of more youthful um, thinner butt was on this fat, but make sure it still wraps underneath here, which it will because we've already sculpted all that. So if you just take the move tool and kind of move this out a little bit right here, that will be perfect. And what I did is I took my uh, damp sander brush and I really carved deep in here to make to make a nice valley between these two butt cheeks. And I took the move tool and I just kind of moved them together a little bit. And then I just used the pinch tool very lightly at the top here. And uh, that's what gave the final result, which I'll show again here. And that gave this final result here. I also went and off camera, I think I add a little bit more um, definition that I didn't do in the video, but not much. So anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you can see here that has, you can see that, that line in between more because it, it there's actually a separation between these two forms. And then I just kind of push them together. And you can actually, um, you know, keep some of this form separate up until that last part. Like you can sculpt all, like after you put the two pieces on there, make sure that gap and everything is perfect. And then you just sculpt this part on it. You leave this alone and never touch this again. And that will have that nice separation of forms. But you can also do it this way and it looks really nice. So there you have it. And so if you were to look underneath this, you know, actually let's go look at the final model and the actual software. So this isn't recording the entire screen. So you won't be able to see all the software. It's fine. You just want to look at the model. And so I'm going to go ahead and let's zoom in here. So you can see how I slightly change it so I push this in just a little bit but watch this it still wraps under and in see how the how the circle changes it shows it still wraps under and in and so let's rotate it 
you can see that it's still happening. So you still have this shape right here. No, notice you can kind of see the the thigh is still cutting into this house shape. Remember this would come straight down like that, like on the other model. But the thigh here is thicker, so the more fat on the inside. But notice how that you can see the shape. See how it wraps around and goes. See how the circle's changing shape. You can tell that it's coming around like that, and then it, all around like this, and that, that's when it's going around toward the front. So it's a good way to help kind of feel the the forms out here. And I might make this model available. So if anyone wants this this model here, uh, if I do make it available, it'll be for the other tutorial where I kind of just show how to sculpt this entire figure. Um, and you can see the breast came out really nice. That more realistic breast shape. More natural, I should say. The other, other, other breast tutorial I did is still realistic. It's just uh, this is more natural. The other one has, you know, younger, youthful. And as we zoom in on here, you can see from the side view, we have that nice view. All right, so the, really that's all I did different is I just took these right here, I took the move tool, and which is here. And I just grabbed right here and I just kinda I just kinda pushed in like this, right? So there was you know before it was more like, you know, that whatever. And I just kinda opened it up a little bit like that. And then I kinda resculpted a little bit and then I put that line and then I just did the move move tool to push push the forms together like this. And then uh, I think I did the pinch tool a little bit up here. And sometimes you might be able to see a little bit of the butt crack there. Let me see, let's use a different matte cap just to see. Yeah, you can kind of see that up there. And I just kind of messed all that up. I'm not going to save this anyway, but let me go ahead and just undo that. So let's go back to where it was. Right there. And you can kind of see that Y right there just a little bit. So there you have it. All right, guys. Hey, if you enjoyed this uh, tutorial at all on how to sculpt butt, it's something you're not going to find for free. This kind of detail for free is really hard to find anywhere online. And if you've if you're interested at all in how to draw better or sculpt better, you're gonna go, oh yeah, that's definitely true. You're having a hard time where people really go down and describe all this kind of detail. I go into even more detail in my course. So if you find this helpful at all, and this will even help for drawing, believe it or not, it's gonna help you tremendously. Um, even if you just attempt to sculpt, to start to learn and feel out the three-dimensional shapes, it's gonna help you draw so much better, even if your sculpting never gets good. So definitely check out my course, my my 3D anatomy course at masterpaintingnow.com. The link is in the description of every every one of my videos. So just go to my website and you'll see that it's there. Um, it might not be linking to it being on sale right now still when you, by the time you watch this. So if the link is no longer valid for the sale, and you're seeing the full price there and you want to get it for like 14 bucks, just let me know. Leave a comment in this video. Oh, ZBrush is going to its uh, screensaver mode. If you That's actually a cool model. If you want to, lost my train of thought. Um, so just leave a comment if you want to get that uh, discount. I can put the discount code in the comment here. I might actually do that at the, at the top pin. I'll also, in my top pin showing, um, I'll also link to that course for you. So, all right, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, it only takes you a second. It really does help out. I know I always forget. Like I'll watch a video and I'll actually like it, but I'll just forget to actually like the video. So that's why I'm reminding you. Just, just like it. it takes you a second. Adios.